Secrets, an opprobrium on NSA interactions and cheating on your wife. A USF Group 792-5 production. Plot. Dwayne Dawkins is the chief data scientist and statistician at Cochrane Analytics, a data mining and research company. The company is located in Midtown St. Petersburg, blending in well with the new housing developments and upwelling of upper middle class youth. Their primary service is providing computer and cell phone usage, usage statistics to local firms, in which Dwayne oversees and manages the employees. These firms then use the statistics to produce goods that are pertinent to users' wants and interests. While Dwayne is revered in the company for his technology and prowess, he is not without vices. Dwayne likes to have affairs, 12 of them in fact, all within the past 9 months. What he does not know is that a certain government agency has been keeping tabs on him and documenting each instance of his infidelity. So one day, he is approached by a government agent who has a proposition. Allow the agency to access the usage data in an effort to deter terrorism or have his infidelity revealed to the whole world, his wife and children, essentially. Characters Dwayne Dawkins The methodical and well-reasoned man behind Cochrane Analytics' success. Unbeknownst to every single person in his life, apart from his 12 mistresses in that government agency, he has a bit of a problem staying loyal to his wife. However, he's a really cool guy to hang out with. Wife the wife of Dwayne Dawkins. She likes tennis. Due to budget constraints, we had to cast the wife and 12 mistresses with the same actress. Now, the wife may have had 12 affairs of her own prior to finding out about Dwayne's, but that's just an unimportant detail. Government agency man. Just like the institution he represents, he's an exemplary of coercion and creepy stalking. He masks it as protecting the general welfare. Government agency man, or GAM, likes to wear a smart suit and sunglasses, regardless of the time of day. He can be seen driving around a surveillance van, ominously labeled National Security Agency, but people are far too involved in their own lives to take any notice of it. The target audience is young adults between the ages of 18 and 28, people who are dishonest and those with something to hide. Conceptually, the show isn't very different from other television or film. There's a relatively happy and successful protagonist. Conflict arises. The protagonist must make a decision. And an outcome that the audience wasn't expecting happens, either sad or happy. While some may claim the plot is a bit formulaic, it still effectively communicates the premise that when mixing business with pleasure, Honesty may not always grant net benefits for all parties involved. Viewers of the show will be gripped with anxiety as they do their own inner reflection and think about what they would do in a similar situation. In episode one, we start off by introducing Dwayne Dawkins, a mild-mannered analytics manager who works at Coughlin Analytics. Dwayne is responsible for the configuration design, implementation, and support of the data analysis solution system that his company uses, as well as being in charge of eight subordinate business analysts. Around his office, Duane is regarded as a model manager, on time, friendly, professional, and willing to work late into the night in order to accomplish his company's goals. Because of Duane's hard work and dedication to his company, he is revered as his company's go-to manager when it comes to tough projects. This status has not gone unnoticed by his female subordinates, and a few of them have crushes on our good-looking and intelligent protagonists. It is at this part in episode one that we start to see that Dwayne Dawkins has a secret. In fact, he has many secrets in the form of mistresses. His vice is that he likes to sleep with women within his company almost as if it is a way to challenge himself. Just as he uses his work to challenge his intellect, he uses his sexual conquests to reaffirm his status as a handsome manager. 
The problem here is that Dwayne has had an ethical lapse by breaking his company's code of ethical conduct. Coughlin Analytics Code of Ethical Conduct explicitly states that it is forbidden for employees to have relationships with their subordinates. Coughlin is trying to prevent a hostile work environment as well as favoritism within the workplace. In Chapter 2 of Management, we see that managers are directly to blame if they put their employees in uncomfortable positions and they should instead be leading by example. It is also indirectly the fault of the executives at Coughlin Analytics for not strictly enforcing their code of ethical conduct. In this case, the executives had to weigh the value of losing their best manager and in essence, higher revenue, versus losing him over some complaints that they thought that they could sweep under the rug. In episode two, we will see how an outside party starts to add drama and intrigue to our plot. Episode two begins with us joining Dwayne as he meets with his, fam with his family at his son Nick's high school baseball game after the meeting with Gam. Along with his work reputation, Dwayne has built a model brand of his family. His son is a multi-sport athlete with a bright future in athletics, paired with good grades, and his father's great looks. His daughter, Anne, is a popular and tal talented dancer within the local youth troupe. His wife works from home and loves to stay active, even building a stout following at the community tennis court. The family does everything together and always supports each other in whatever event someone may be doing. Dwayne's life is quite envious. At the game, Dwayne eventually gets his interaction with Gam off his mind. Nick is performing exceptionally well, and the game is pretty close in score. They are facing their crosstown rivals. As the other team scores to make the game tied, Dwayne nonchalantly scans the visiting team's fan section. Upon looking across, he sees one of his mistresses, a co-worker who is still wearing the company shirt from earlier. Instantly, he snapped back to his conversation with Gam. Nervously, he gets up to get a drink of water from the concession stand. While in line, he notices his co-worker walk by on her way to the restroom, although she did not see him. Quickly, he buries his phone, his face into his phone, hoping neither her nor anyone else around made the connection between the two of them. He returned to his seat shortly after and refused to look in the direction of the visiting crowd. He felt sick to his stomach, realizing just how critical of a situation he was in. After the game, Nick and a couple of his teammates walked over to socialize with Dwayne and the rest of the family. One of his teammates noticed Dwayne and his wife holding hands, stating his admiration of them as the perfect couple. Nick chimed in as well, saying that he wishes to be as great of a husband to his wife someday. The accolades crushed Dwayne, knowing the facade he may have to expose. On the ride home, he anxiously assesses his current dilemma. Does his family have to bear the ramifications of his inability to stay faithful, or is the data worth preserving the lie? We find this out in the next episode. Episode 3 begins with Dwayne Dawkins being exposed as a lying cheater on national news. He has been accused of sexual harassment from several of his female employees. His wife is distraught. And she started divorce proceedings. She's promised to get to the bottom of this and to make him pay for what he's done to their family. She says she will not let this go unpunished. She will not let his crimes go unnoticed. And she promised to do whatever she can to bring him down to his knees. Dwayne is hauled off to court for what feels like the end of his life. He's being charged with crimes from his employer. His wife is seeking divorce. She's seeking alimony, child support. Um, she wants the house, the car. She wants everything. She wants him left with nothing but the clothes on his back, the money in his pocket, and supervised visitation for his children until he gets his behavior under control. Dwayne is now left alone, sitting in a bar, trying to determine at what point in his life 
did he lose such control? At what point in his life did he not notice that his life was just spinning out of control? Being approached by the NSA didn't stop him from cheating on his wife with all the multiple women. Being told by several other women that they were not interested in him and they did not want to pursue the relationships he was trying to start at his employment did not change him. It wasn't until he was exposed on national news that he became more aware of where he'd ended up. Now, alone, sitting in a bar, being ridiculed, trying to decide where should he go next? What is his next move? How do he fix this? He has no answers.